Okay, hi there, this is Caroline Newman, aka The Dance Lady, and this is my kind of video webinar, or it's been a nightmare, so I apologise about the um, quality of this, uh, but hopefully what will happen is my enthusiasm and motivation for working in schools and working with kids um, will come through, rather than my severe lack of technical knowledge on computers and webinars and so on and so forth. So here we go, working in schools and working with kids. So first of all, who is the dance lady? So I've been working in the fitness industry since 1992. Um, I started specialising in um, fit, kids fitness oh, ages ago, in the early 90s. I was one of the first people to do the original Fitness Professionals Fit Kid course. Um, so there I am holding my uh, DVD quick plug there um, and um, in 2008 I started working for the West Wiltshire School Sports Partnership as dance coordinator and my job was to deliver dance and fitness sessions to over 70 schools in the um, West Wiltshire Partnership and it's great absolutely love my job um, I would deliver after school sessions curriculum sessions special days CPD training um, unfortunately when the government took away the funding that meant meant my job went into redundancy and at the same time I found out I was pregnant so um, I had no option really um, I was made redundant and found out I was pregnant on the same day so I decided I would de develop the company The Dance Lady and that's where it stands now lucky enough because I had links and contacts with my school I was able to get back into work quite quickly um, but this is why I'm doing this webinar because I appreciate that people find it quite hard to access work in schools so that's what I'm going to helpfully hope you with. So there I am in the top play, uh, corner there on a playground working out with some kids and um, that's part of what I call a dance and fitness day, a dance day. And um, on a day like that what I would do is I would work with every single class within that school and they would get an experience of a dance or a fitness session. Um, and that particular day was an Olympic themed one. So it started off with a mass playground wake and shake uh, to chariots of fire. Um, and it uh, just went on from there. Um, now the schools really, really love these dance days because it gets an opportunity of mass inclusion. Every child benefits, so it's total inclusion. Uh, the teachers get to get a few ideas, um, and then also because they're working with me, I have to get commented. It's nice to work with a professional, so that's always quite good fun. So, is this something that you could offer to schools? Could you offer a whole day delivery of whatever you do, focusing within each class and with each each age group. Uh, my other sort of uh, baby of my event is the um, two-day dance festival that I hold at the Bath Forum and there I am, oh this video camera's not working very well but there I am, I'm dressed up as Tinkerbell um, and the theme of the dance day or the dance festival rather um, on that particular one was Disney um, but we've also done um, Hollywood and we've done the Olympics and again that's an amazing event worth considering if this is something that you could take into your little entourage. Um, that again accesses uh, between 400 to 600 kids it's a huge event uh, the parents get to watch the event in the evening we do it in a really lovely old cinema and it's got an upstairs balcony so the kids get an experience of a proper show if you like and don't forget many of these kids have probably never been in a really old cinema or a theater so that's an event in itself they design and they do a four minute routine on the theme and they can use any kind of dance that they want to and many of them do costumes and again it just offers a brilliant performance platform don't forget in the schools um, there's probably a, like a small little hall that they use and some of the village schools don't even have that and also if the school have decided that the year six class for example are going to do the dance festival um, this is quite nice because many children don't get to experience uh, dance. Um, lots of children get to do things like football and rugby and athletics and swimming and especially if you've got a lovely proactive parents who are willing to ship you off to these different activities. Um, not so many t uh, children get to access dance, uh, and especially boys. So the dance festival is unique in that because it gets to impact on so many children, and especially those children that may na may not be able to um, experience dance as an art.
So, um, do you even like working with young people and especially children? Now, hopefully you do, otherwise why are you listening to that webinar? But you'd be surprised at how many people do work with kids and shouldn't be working with kids. Um, and it just shows, it comes through and it's my biggest pet hate. Um, so, if you don't like working with kids, don't do it. They will see through you and I'll see in a minute, I'll tell you in a minute, you have to be honest to work with kids. So, what's your motivation? Is it money? Um, well, obviously you need to earn money, and obviously I make a living from this, um, but it's not a huge earning because school, all the schools are on budgets and funding, um, so it's not an unreserved pot of money that we're going to be tapping into. Um, you have to be passionate and you have to have motivation and you have to be adaptable so hopefully all, all these are qualities that you're hearing from me and, and hopefully experiencing from me and um, all of these things will be needed plus more if you're going to work with children. Expect the unexpected, so a bit like my webinar that completely failed on me the other day, expect the unexpected, uh, be ready with a backup plan um, for when you're working with kids, quite often you'll go into the school and they've completely forgotten that you've come in, uh, There's all the tables are out in the hall or the mobile library's there, something or other. Um, so just always make sure that you're equipped with a, a second lesson plan, something that you can do instead. Um, simple things like always take your own music system don't rely on the school's music system chances are it's been in the playground in the rain for two days and the CD doesn't work and, and all the rest of it so always expect the unexpected but to be fair as hard and fitness professionals we usually are very good at doing that sort of thing when you're working with these young people it could be that you are going to be affecting and making an impact on the stars of the future. You do not know who's going to be in your class and you do not know what your little session may um, do to them. So um, it could be that you have the next triathlete or the, the next swimmer or something like that and just your little session of whatever you might be doing is inspiring their journey um, into the fitness and sporting world. So just bear that in mind. I know that sounds a bit way out there but it has happened. A colleague of mine does the same version as me but she specialises in gymnastics so she goes around to schools delivering gymnastics sessions uh, and she now has three young children on the GB gymnastics squad so they are there and if it isn't for things that we can provide they may not get picked up especially if they're not going to external clubs so on that note you can make a difference to that that child or the young children, young people that you're working with and again it could be that your little session that you're going to be doing with them whether it be boxer size or cheerleading or aerobics or whatever it could be making a difference in their day and or in their life I'm quite lucky because I have fond memories of my PE teacher and I appreciate that many people don't but um, my PE teacher was really integral in making sure that I followed a fitness route. Um, he knew that academically I wasn't very strong so he really encouraged me when it was time for PE because that's when I sort of excelled um, and if it wasn't for him perhaps I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. So you can make a difference to that child's life. Like I said you don't know what's going on in that young person's life. Maybe just running around the playground with you doing a little circuit or whatever it might be is the only time that they can actually be free of, of bullying for example so it does happen uh, so as I've already touched upon honest uh, honesty and the kids will see straight through that's why I like working with kids actually uh, they're very good barometers they can see if you uh, haven't really got your heart into the job so if it's something that you're not entirely sure that you want to do then don't do it don't work with kids because they will see through you straight away Unfortunately, challenging behaviour is something that I'm coming across more so um, and you need to have some sort of plan, some sort of blueprint that how you are going to deal with challenging behaviour within your class. Now if you're leading curriculum sessions, it could be that you have a teacher or a TA in there and the school will have their own challenging behaviour um, process. So it may be that the child is asked to leave, they might get an um, unhappy face sticker, um, it might be three strikes and you're out, um, whatever, whatever. Um, however that works, you need to try and work along the same lines. 
if you're doing after school clubs then you have your own system but I'll touch upon this again later on. It's worth getting some sort of education and reading up about challenging behaviour. Challenging behaviour isn't necessarily just because they're naughty, it could be a learning difficulty that you're having to work alongside with. And there we are, Miss Vicky Pollard, um, the most challenging behaviour student that perhaps we could come across. And this reminds me of my Year 8 girls that I was asked to work with. Um, quite a sad little scenario really. They were complete non-doers, i.e. they didn't do PE. Um, it was an achievement if you even managed to get them into the gym, let alone get them wearing anything that res resembled a PE uniform. Uh, hair up, that kind of thing, and they'd an expressed an, an interest in doing some dance. They wanted to do some street dance, so that's why I was asked to come and work with these girls. And they were really hard cookies. Um, the school that they were in was um, earmarked for demolition, um, and the town that they lived in, um, not much sort of job aspirations, career aspirations, um, high teenage pregnancy rate, that sort of thing. Uh, so these girls wanted to do street dance but it became pretty evident after the second week that there's no way I was going to be able to get them to actually move around and jump around vigorously. Um, so I took a bit of a risk with these guys and decided upon using a prop um, to help them get into the idea of street dance and we actually used chairs and we changed the format to do a chair dance workout which could have been a little bit risque if, we, if I'd not thought about it properly and if we'd not sort of gone through what was appropriate and so on. And uh, these girls choreographed their own Moulin Rouge style chair dance. We filmed it at the beginning of their sessions and we filmed it at the end. And then they had something that they could show their head of department, uh, the head of PE rather. And um, he was really, really impressed. And the girls increased in their confidence and they actually attended the class. So their attendance levels were up and their work progress and work records within schools was better. Um, so all in all, it was well worth worth doing but see the challenge behavior they expressed um, it was quite sad because again what would happen like I said the school was earmarked for demolition they were only in year eight and within those eight years they'd already been uh, under supervision of three different heads because the school was in bad status so these girls all sort of had no self-worth and they didn't have any self-value because um, no one had any self-worth and value for them so it's all a bit sad so again you could be making the difference to that young child so initial approach to schools, now this seems to be the thing that's um, hard for people, there's no golden rule, there's no right or wrong and I'm still struggling with this. So I find it's a varied approach. You need to find out who your best main contact is. Now your main contact is going to be your primary link teacher, the PE specialist, the business manager, front of house or head and each school is different. <clears throat> you'll usually find that the expert will be very very willing and very very keen to talk to you once you get going and like I say there's there's no sort of hard and fast rule to it in fact it's quite funny um, the school that I'm aiming to send my son to I know the head I've spoken to him um, a couple of times we ha he's his school does the dance festival which is my baby so we speak by that uh, my auntie is the caretaker and the receptionist is a family friend yet I still am unable to get any delivery within that school whether it be after school club or whatever um, but I now see that as a bit of a challenge I will get to work in that school sooner or later um, so it's just getting in there and I, I'll talk about that in a minute once you're in you're in um, increasingly an active parent via the PTA is brilliant. Um, now the PTAs are very dynamic, they're changing in their role within schools and PTAs have a lot more clout than what they used to. Um, PTAs can also access charitable status so therefore they can access different pots of funding and money. So it's worth finding out who um, a parent is who is on the PTA. Now chances are again if you're already in the fitness world that said person 
person could be your um, uh, personal training client, coming to your boot camp, attending your Zumba class or whatever it may be. So um, find out your clients within those sessions, find out who's on the PTA, um, get talking to them, get talking, send what you want to do. And it's, you know, it's the same old adage, it's, it's what, not what, you know, it's who, you know. So the SSPs, the School Sports Partnership, so that's who I worked for before it, they went into redundancy. Now each area, each county has a school sports partnership. And I'll give you a website at the end of um, uh, something that you can contact and find out who your link is and who your school's partnership is. Now some of them are very still active and going and some have um, sort of just slowed down a little bit. What you have to remember is that the PDM, the partnership manager, or they may now be referred to as a school games organiser, um, this person was probably working full time, like five days a week, and now because of the funding has been reduced to possibly two or three days, and they're still trying to achieve the same amazing results that they were. So when you do get this contact with this person, bear in mind all the troubles that they've had and be really time efficient for them and time effective. Tell them what you can do for them and how it's going to impact upon their schools because that's what they are passionate about. Uh, in some local authority areas, they may have an active department. Um, so, for example, there is a, um, a, a side, if you like, to the local county council in my area, and that is Active Trowbridge. Now, again, this is a different source of funding, a different pot of funding. And the idea is that the active um, areas uh, offer health, lifestyle, sporting opportunities to people. Now, the active um, area then also go into the schools and offer different things. Now, it could be that you've got one in your area. I know there's definitely active Dorset, Wiltshire and Gloucestershire. Um, again, you just need to Google it. Again, these people are really busy. They are hard to get hold of and they are hard to get going. Um, but um, once you're in there again, it's it's so um, it's another important link to have. So just keep pursuing that person. Uh, now going back to the schools. The, the local schools in your area, definitely the primary schools and possibly the secondary schools, have what's called um, business uh, managers and they attend school cluster meetings. Now within these meetings they discuss lots and lots of different things, diary dates and so forth, but they also um, discuss best practices and this is when you could come in. So if, you're, if you want to deliver something and you feel that it could go as a whole school approach, then ask for just a five minute slot. Um, my friend owns a photocopying business. He asked to speak to the school cluster meeting about his um, services, what he could provide, what he could provide fee-wise. Um, because there were several schools there that were happy to sign up, he got a big contract and then they negotiated prices. So if you could get just a couple of five minutes, then that'd be great. Now don't forget that your business manager may also be attending your Zumba class. So again, find out what people do for jobs and get in in there. So school funding. Now the latest uh, news on the school funding can be obtained from the Youth Sport Trust or um, Sport UK. Now it's Youth Sport Trust is www.youthsporttrust.org. Um, they have a brilliant downloadable file um, for the schools. Um, it tells the schools on what to access and what's best practice and what to look for and how to spend that funding. Now, from my understanding, the funding is there, and it will be definitely there for the September term. Now, I know this because one of my schools has asked me to give them a quote for the whole year. They want me every Tuesday through every term for the whole year. Um, so that's absolutely fantastic. The funding is being spent on all areas, including training, equipment, resources. So um, when you are doing your costing, bear that in mind. That £8,000, £9,000 for some schools is not going to go very, very far. So you're going to have to be dynamic and you're going to gonna be thinking out of the box. Whatever services you decide that you would like to offer to a school, whether it be boxer size, um, circuits, health and fitness resources, whatever, it needs to be sustainable, 
inclusive mass participation. I've also been advised and asked to say on this webinar from a colleague of mine that if you're offering something different, then that's going to be uh, exciting for schools. So um, most of the schools already are able to offer things like netball and hockey and football and so on because their PE teachers are happy and feel confident to um, offer that. But things like um, fitness, aerobics, legs, bums and tums, um, boxer size, cheerleading, hula hooping, the sort of thing that we can provide, obviously they don't have those skills. Um, so something different, thinking outside the box, using our creativity. So as I've touched on, be realistic with your charges. Um, so I know that £50 an hour would obviously cover your time, your petrol, your rate of pay and so on and so on. But if you go to a school charging £50 an hour, chances are you're not going to get any work there because £50 an hour could be 300 bean bags and 20 hoops. Um, so how could you... Uh, alter your charges somehow? What could you offer as incentives to get you in there? Um, I charge uh, quite a lot less than that uh, an hour, but I've found that once I'm in on a term um, and once I've established a relationship, I then just tweak my price slightly and the schools were more than happy to do that. I mean, obviously I had to do this very carefully, but they were more than happy to, for a slight increase because they could see what they were getting was definitely worth paying for. And then also so by that point, there was no one else that could replace me. The kids were into me. Um, the parents were enjoying the sessions that the kids were getting. Um, so, it, you know, just have a little think about that. So this is the same for anything. Once you have a name, you're in. But once you have a name, don't bombard. Remember the golden rule. People buy from people. So create a relationship. And schools teachers, head teachers, so on, are very much the same. Don't forget within a school, um, they're quite insular. They do the same old thing term after term. Same sort of thing happens year after year within a school. So if you're a new person coming in and offering all these fandangled services and so on, they are going to be a little bit standoffish to start off with. So just remember that and, you know, how would you like to be approached by a new provider? So I have spoke about try, trying different methods of communication, so that's flyers, emails, posters, phone calls, etc. But definitely your one-on-one -on -one meeting with that key name, that key person, is the way to get in. And so don't forget, most schools' lunch breaks are usually between 12 and 1, so you ask for five minutes at maybe quarter past 12 or quarter to 1, something like that, um, just to say what you do and what you can provide, what you can offer. I also have a little DVD that I send to schools. It's got lots of clips, it's got testimonials, it's got pictures, um, it's got a, a little video of me teaching a class so they can watch that. And also that's accessible via my Pinterest and YouTube and website. So uh, many, many different ways that the schools can get to see what you can offer. Now, this is kind of standard, bog standard here, but always be friendly to front of house. So that's your receptionist. Uh, quite often these receptionists can be um, a little bit sharp in their ways. It's because they're very, very busy people. They have lots to deal with. Um, they are also the fountain of knowledge and they actually secretly run the school. Um, so these are the people that you need to get past to get to the person that you would like to talk to. So it's just being friendly and, and that's the same for anything, isn't it? offer an incentive or a freebie and at that I would offer the incentive or a freebie to the um, staff, so to the teachers, um, maybe offer it a boot camp or a, a Zumba session, whatever you want to offer to the kids, offer it to the adults so they can see the sort of thing that the kids could have an experience of and again you're offering that also to PTA as well so they get to know. So once you're in, you're in. Well, that's kind of bog standard, isn't it? You're offering your one-off sessions. Uh, and, l well, again, thinking outside the box, so could you offer a lunchtime activity? Now, 
when the school sport partnerships were um, very uh, evident, um, there was lots of activities in lunchtime. Um, some, there's two camps of thinking on this. Some people feel that the lunchtime break is for kids to let off steam and uh, free spirit, free will, go uh, run around the playground and kind of, you know, play your own games, that kind of thing. And then there's another camp that says that it should be a little bit more structured, uh, a little bit more organised, because then there's less chance of kids being bullied and bad behaviour and that kind of thing. So a lot of the MDSAs and other staff ha were trained in delivery of, of like little fitness games and, and little things to do with hula hoops and bean bags and so on. And you used to see that all the time in schools, in the playgrounds. Um, I tend to see that not as much now um, which is a bit of a shame so is this something that you could take on you only want to be offering um, a little activity say 30 minutes and it only needs to be in one corner of the playground and it could be like a mini boot camp or it could be skip fit or it could be a little boxer size session um, something like that so that's in the lunch time after school clubs, I teach every day in after school club and predominantly my after school clubs are dance and this is again because the teachers don't feel confident delivering dance and lots of the kids want to be able to do street dance, that sort of thing. But what could you offer? So is it Zumba? Is it cheerleading? Is it hula hooping? Is it boxing? Is it um, a fitness circus? Is it boot camp? Um, Things like family fitness, uh, again, talk to your PTAs. Is this something that the PTAs would like to see, that it gives an opportunity for the mum and the dad to get involved with what the kids are doing? Because schools uh, have much more of a holistic approach now. Um, so after school clubs, again, don't forget, if, you're, if you've managed to get a meeting with your school and they're talking about funding, then um, perhaps sort of offer after school clubs could be met by perhaps the PTA. All of my children in after school clubs are asked for a nominal fee. So they usually ask for about a pound, a pound fifty to go towards the after school club fee. Um, parents are more than happy to pay this because effectively it's cheap babysitting, isn't it? So there's something to add to that discussion. And on that same note, then you've got breakfast club, which is obviously at the other end of the day. So could this be tagged on to maybe a boot camp that you could run at the school? Um, the breakfast club could be something different in the fact that it offers a nutritional service. Maybe they could make healthy smoothies or something. Um, I'll talk about this again more in a second. But there is a system called the Energy Club. Um, and a fun research has shown that if children do a little bit of exercise before they start learning, they're more likely to take um, knowledge in and they're both better to learn, easier to learn, that sort of thing. So um, the whole breakfast club thing uh, breakfast club sessions is something that you can consider. Now this happens uh, with the judo man in my area. The judo guy goes in first thing in the morning he offers a judo session. Parents absolutely love it because they can drop their kids off earlier. Uh, the kids absolutely love it because they get to chuck each other about before school um, and his sessions are fully booked. Sports day, so it is the time of year for sports day at the moment. So again, could you go and find out when your local school sports day is? Could you offer a mass wake and shake or a stretch or um, muscle awareness? Um, you know, could you offer warm-ups, that kind of thing. So again, just being a bit dynamic with your thinking, your creativity. Some of the schools, well in fact actually quite a lot of the schools now, they offer healthy school weeks and this is when I go and deliver those dance days, those healthy fitness days that you saw on the first slide. Um, so again, find out if they've got a healthy school week. The healthy school week aim is all about emotional, um, physical, psychological awareness of healthness. Um, so you can incorporate a, that sort of thing to your sessions. And along with healthy school days, um, there are other different themed weeks, such as country weeks. So, for example, I was asked to go into school in each class at a different country. Um, so we had Brazil. So I did um, some, uh, like, those mini little footballs, and we did, like, a little dance with a mini football. 
um, and then we did some Irish jig, we did some Scottish country dancing and then we also did American line dancing. So again, you know, is this something that you could offer to the sort of thing that you do? Um, it was good fun, it you know, just took a little bit of planning and preparation. Um, your school fate, now again, it's a time of year where all the schools are, are having fates to raise money for the schools. Now, if you're already delivering an after-school club, then your little after-school clubbers, whether they're doing dance or, or um, boxercise or skipping or cheer or hula, um, they could then do a little demo of what they've been up to. And the kids absolutely love that. It's a performance platform for them. The uh, the head and the teachers absolutely love that because they get to see what the, the, the children are up to. Parents love it. So that's, you know, that's a, a good box to have ticked. Um, if you're not already in the school offering something, then um, could you go with whatever you do, whether it be boxer size, zumbatomic, and do a little try it out session. It gets you in, the kids get to do it, it's your foot in the door. Now, other school fundraisers, um, Zumbatomic, Zumba events, sponsored hula hooping, cheerleading. Um, the British Heart Foundation do a skip fit session um, where the school can raise money for the British Heart Foundation by doing a skip a thon. Um, so, find out what sort of different things that you could access. Uh, one of my schools asked me to become involved in a neon disco. And um, basically, this, the school disco has changed slightly from perhaps our, our day, as it were. All the kids were wearing neon stuff, and I bought some of those um, bracelets and necklaces that are day glow. And, uh, we did a little routine, a little dance routine that they all knew and um, they all had to pay 50p and it was brilliant, the kids absolutely loved it again the PTA raised a little bit of money um, and now they've booked me in for another night doing the same sort of thing so again, just sort of think outside the box, what could you offer um, now the prom dance, now this is something for my 2014 uh, plan um, all the secondaries, or a lot of the secondaries now do prom dance events and a lot of the primary schools are now offering for their year six leaders. Um, what happens is they go to these prom events and then everyone stands around because no one knows actually how to dance properly. So I was drafted in to teach two formal dances um, to my secondary school. And uh, they, when the music came on, they all then knew how to dance. And it was brilliant to see a little bit of etiquette and so on being formed. The school absolutely loved it and the kids absolutely loved it because it was something structured. So is this something that you could do? Okay, so housekeeping. You need to have a valid and an updated CRB and the new VIB. The CRB, CRB has gone through a lot of changes, so get onto their website and double check what changes have been made. Um, if you haven't got a CRB, don't even bother approaching the school because you won't get in. Um, now, as for the changes, here's one, for example. Uh, when pregnant, I wasn't teaching for about six months. Uh, apparently, because I had a six-month time that I wasn't within a school, this actually made my CRB obsolete, and I had to gain a new one. Um, so lots of new changes. Find out what they are. Make sure that you're still relevant. Personal liability insurance. Um, I have 25 million. I think that's probably bog standard by now. Um, again, I, I never quite understand why someone doesn't have their own insurance. Don't rely on a third party's insurance. Um, if something does happen, you'll guarantee the insurance company will do their best to get out of it. Um, so have your own insurance uh, and then, you know, it's, it's for your own keeping then, isn't it? Uh, child protection of level two, again, if this is not standard, it's definitely best practice. Um, lots of training providers now offer child protection. It can be done in half a day, and this just gives you the knowledge that you should have when working with children. Same for first aid, that can be delivered on a half day course. It's best practice, if not essential for insurance reasons, and also um, a paediatric first aid qualification is handy. References, ideally from a head of another school and from kids, uh, definitely teachers and or your PTA. Um, my references are on my website. Um, I've also got them on, like I say, a little video clip that I give to the teachers. And it's just um, giving them that opportunity to see who you are, what you do and that you are for real. 
level two national coaching certificate okay um now this is a bit of a bugbear of mine when i was speaking to a colleague about this she owns a training providing company um, and she asks for all her coaches to have a national level two coaching certificate so say in football or rugby or whatever now as fitness professionals um, especially if we're not coaching sport we don't have one of these we don't particularly want one of these um, but what she's saying is that that level two gives someone the ability to be able to run a class and have a lesson plan and the systems and behavior management and that kind of thing now we all know this sort of stuff as, as fitness people, most of us have this. However, it is something worth to consider, especially if you're finding that you can't get in directly with a school, but um, a, a, a training company um, are, are willing to take you on. So a, a multi-skill certificate would be great. I'm afraid that's a bit blurred, you can't see. Um, but Ronnie Heath from Create Development does a fantastic little multi-skills course. Uh, a lot of his stuff is really top-edge. Um, stuff so again it's worth looking on it may not be quite your cup of tea but it is something to consider so uh, child behavior management and I've always um, I've also already sort of touched on this that's quite essential to have now just for your own knowledge so longevity so you've got yourself into your school you've got your name you're in there you're delivering what's going to keep you in there what's going to keep that school coming back for more and like I touched on don't forget the schools that they're, they're creatures of habit once you're in you're in and I've some of my schools um, even forget to tell me now that they want me in it's just that they've always had me in on term four on a Tuesday so they just expect me to be there uh, and this is how schools work but to make sure that I get my repeat business I always provide provide brief lesson plans um, and this is fantastic more so for Ofsted they can whip out the stuff and um, Ofsted are happy um, I provide photos and videos of the school of the classes that I've worked with now obviously there is a child protection issue to this you need to uh, get advice from the head of your school um, to what their feelings are towards this but the photos and value um, videos are invaluable because it shows what you do it shows your worth it shows the progressions of the children gathering testimonials from your teachers parents and kids and again I've already spoken about this but it's so invaluable you know if they can see this um, in a format you know they're more likely to take you on and keep you going um, at the end of a term, if I've been delivering a dance club, I do a little blurb about what they've been up to um, with possible pictures and a little video link. Um, the school adds that into their newsletter. Parents love it. They get to see what little Freddie's been up to. Um, the PTA absolutely love it. Uh, and some of the schools like to add it to their Facebook page or their Twitter account. Try and offer a variety, hopefully you can't see that spelling, a variety, um, offer a variety of sessions. So like I said, if you've got something different, more than likely you're going to be in. So if you can offer cheer, hula, boxer size, skipping, zumba, street dance, fitness, yoga, pilates, whatever it is, if it's something the school don't already offer, um, it's more likely that you're going to get that opportunity. Inclusive of every child. Um, don't be scared if you've got wheelchair users. I have a couple of wheelchair users uh, in my dance lessons and they just do exactly the same as the other kids. Um, but as professionals, we just get on with it. We just cope with it, don't we, hey? Half-term activities. Now, again, this is something that's increasing more so. Um, I find that the schools are offering half-term activities within their sites. Um, I'm being told that there's not much younger for the, uh, not much on offer for provision of the younger kids. So, like your year ones and your year twos. So, if this is the upper end or the ages that you like to work with, then that's something to offer. Um, again boys if boys aren't into football what do boys do it's it's quite hard for boys to do stuff so if you're doing perhaps something a boy led thing and um, boxer size then that would be great dads and lads mum and me family fitness it's all there to think about it's all there to take an action with okay so getting on to brand 
Um, you have to be easily identifiable to kids, staff and parents. And my funny little story is I have a dance lady t-shirt. It's black and it's got this big white sort of person, uh, white blobbed person doing dance. And if I don't wear it, the kids go to me, who do we know who you are? Because we don't know who you are. You haven't got a t-shirt on. We don't know if you're the dance lady. Um, so that's quite funny. And it just shows that branding works. Again, you then become someone that the school recognise. Um, when you're advertising your stuff, whether it be on Facebook, on, on the website, make sure that you're using your brand and also the school brand. And don't forget the brand, the, most of the schools are, are business managers now, so um, the business managers are going to be really keen for you to be spreading the word of the school. Your brand is going to be on your business cards, your posters, your invoices. Now, something I've just started doing, I'm going to include a lot more in my 2014 plan, is um, things for the kids to wear, i.e. dance ladies t-shirts. So I just got a job lot of big t-shirts and I put dancer on the back and uh, dance lady stuff on the front uh, and the, the children that attended the club were allowed to wear that. Oh my word, they were they were just overwhelmed with it. They just loved it. Um, and it was because it was it made an identifiable product for them. They were part of a thing. They were part of a club. The other kids wanted the T-shirt, but they weren't allowed to wear it. Um, so this it just helps with you. It helps with your sessions. Um, also, I'm going to invest in those little plastic wristbands and just get the website written on them and, again, maybe dance or something put on it. And maybe the kids could buy it for a, a small fee. Um, but they just love it. And it's because it's a, a sort of an ownership. It's a little club. And there's my dance lady brand. So other organisations. Here we go. So www.theyouth or oh, youthsportstrust.org so that's www.youthsportstrust.org and they have a national school sports week that's coming up the 24th to the 28th of June um, again could you be offering your mass warm up or your bleep test or your fitness sessions or something also on the Youth Sport Trust website is the downloadable information for teachers on the funding, uh, what to expect and how to spend that funding. So if you already have that information and you're going to a school, then you'll be able to talk to them on the same levels. Uh, www.cspnetwork.org That's the County Sports Partnership Network. Okay, if you go onto that website, there's a great big map. You click on your area and it will tell you where your school sports partnership is and who is the partnership manager. And that will give you the link straight away. Energy Club UK, just Google them. They're on Twitter, they're on Facebook, and they've got some brilliant videos on YouTube um, about the stuff they do. Now, I, I don't know all that much stuff about them, but I know that they were going around the country with training sessions, and they were delivering these training sessions. I'm pretty sure they were free, and the idea was that you went and delivered this in schools. Now, I don't think there was a stipulation that you had to be a TA already working within a school. Um, look into it. It could be your access into a local school. Uh, WASP, so this is the Wiltshire Active Sports Partnership. Again, you will have one in your area, so you just need to Google it and find out. And they tend to work with the older age, so 14 plus. So, for example, um, WASP had some sport of eight funding and I did some Zumba sessions um, and it was for girls of 14 plus and the idea was that they did these sessions and at the end of the sessions after the funding had run, uh, had run out for that particular block they were then able to access Zumba via other classes that I did or, or other instructors so it gave them a taste of what they could do and then hopefully they were able to follow it up. Um, so you will have an active sports partnership somewhere, so have a little Google. So then you have your independent providers, and this is a friend of mine, PH Sports, Pete Hickton Sports. He has lots and lots of different coaches that go around delivering um, football and rugby and athletics and that kind of thing to schools. But for some reason, traditionally, these companies tend not to have people that can deliver dance or gymnastics and 
um, boxer size, that kind of thing. So this is where you could jump in and work perhaps with them or negotiate fees. So find out who the training companies are in your area. Now chances are if they, they are already in a school, a school may not be all that keen to take on another organisation because they've got one in place. So link partnerships with these people, find out what they do, find out what you could offer them. Trowbridge Town Active, so I've already talked about the Town Active. Find out if there's one in your local town and what they're doing. U-Dance, again U-Dance obviously is specifically dance, but again they have pots of funding for specific dance sessions, um, more community rather than school. Um, but again, a hook up with them, find out what they're offering and what they're doing. Now, in my area, in Wiltshire, there's quite an abundance of independent schools and or free schools. There's Steiner schools, I don't know if you've heard of them. Um, so they run a slightly different organisation on education. But again, they're, all, they're always doing PE. Um, so what could you offer them? What's going to be something different? Obviously, it's a different type of parent that's sending their child to those sorts of schools. So they may be looking for different um, physical activity. So social media, um, you're probably quite a fay with your social media, but more and more schools are on Facebook, they're on Twitter, teachers are on Twitter and Facebook, and so get in there, find out where they are. Again, they may be these people that are already attending your boot camp and your personal training clients, that sort of thing. So hook up with people, talk about what you do and what you want to do. Um, I have a Pinterest page and on my Pinterest I put my lesson plans and um, I put pictures and quotes that kind of thing and this gets looked on by other schools so it's it's worth doing there's a couple of websites that I found um, active Dorset there you go IR sports I think that was Ipswich way or something like that so, oh, they are Stafford and Stone, and I know Stafford and Stone were looking for people to deliver dance. Um, so if you're someone from the dance background, um, just, you know, it's going to take half an hour on Google, but it's worth finding out who is in sport, in PE, and, and what they're offering. So keep in touch. Here I am, www.thedancelady.com. My Facebook page is The Dance Lady. Twitter, Caroline at the underscore dance underscore lady, uh, Caroline at the dance lady dot com. So there's loads of way of getting in contact with me um, if you want more information about how to work in schools. My top tips are just keep going at it. Once you've got a name, you'll be in. Um, and if you've got all your systems in place, um, a good structure, what you can provide, what they would like to provide examples of lesson plans that sort of thing you're going to be in there straight away because you're showing that you're a professional person and like I say the schools and the people working in schools they haven't got time to be chasing people up and, and so on they're so busy so if you're organized then you're going to be um, a godsend for them so keep dancing or whatever you do and here's a little picture of Brucey and Tess to keep you on your day. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Um, like I said, please feel free to hook up with me. I apologise for this really sort of unprofessional way of getting this web webinar across to you, but I am really passionate about what I do, and sometimes it worries me that there's no one else like me around. Um, and there should be. There should be more people out there working with kids. So, like I said, although this is not the most professional way of getting my message across, I've been motivated and passionate enough to do it. So I hope this helps. Let's speak again soon. Have a good one. Bye.